Well, it's Friday, and as always, the Night Sky Guy, Andrew Fazekas, what a pleasure to welcome you in person. Thanks for having me here. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here, and it's great to connect like this with our viewers. We're going to talk about uh, shopping tips today, scoping out scopes, but first, as always, stargazing. What do you have in mind? Well, like always, there's stuff happening in the night sky all the time. So we've got Cassiopeia, the queen of the north that people can take a look at. Now, any time over the course of the next few weeks, if you've got clear skies, look towards the northeast early in the evening, very civilized stargazing time around 6 p.m. You get a chance to see this beautiful giant lopsided W that's made up of a very bright stars. You can even see it in the suburbs of any large city. That's what makes it so, such a joy to see. And if you've got binoculars, well, then you get to see some really cool stuff because uh, with magnification, you get to see things called star clusters. And Cassiopeia is very well known for, uh, for seeing a lot of different stars that you can see in there because it's, it's smack dab in the middle of the Milky Way. The Milky Way runs right through this, this constellation. So if you pick up a pair of binoculars, you see tons of stars, but there's two very, really cool particular uh, uh, star clusters. One's called M52. Uh, it's a very rich cluster with over four. 400 member stars and you can see it with, uh, uh, with the whole thing with just a pair of binoculars and get this it's 5,000 light years away. You always love to tell us how far it is and how <laughs> long it takes for that light to get to Earth. Yeah that's the wonder of you know astronomy is really understanding what you're seeing in those little pretty points of light in the sky. So look for the W in the Northeast all winter long right? You bet. Okay, and looking ahead now to the holiday season, you've got some great gift-giving ideas here, and you've been scoping out scopes for us. Now, obviously, this is a telescope, and I'm guessing I start by looking here, but I don't really know how they work. Well, this is a, what's called a reflecting telescope. It's based on mirrors. So mirror is, a, is its primary heart of the telescope. That's what collects light. There's also refractors, which are lens-based, like the lens in your eyeglasses. But this is a mirror type. They tend to be cheaper in price, and you get a big bang for your buck because they're large. They can be very large for a very good price. And how it works, basically, is that the light comes, shines through. Uh, say you're looking at the moon. It shines through the main part okay. of it, through here, through this end of the telescope. Right, The light travels to the other end of the tube there's a big mirror like a bowl shaped mirror and it collects all the light and then it goes to a secondary mirror at the top here and then it bounces off to the side here where the eyepiece is and that's what you look through the eyepiece to see what you're looking at obviously I'd have to take the lens cap off that's right <laughs> and it would have to <laughs> be nighttime as well nighttime would help and clear skies too okay. <laughs> now okay before we start shopping there are lots of options out there w can I go anywhere for this kind of a telescope no you know I really recommend folks go to an astronomy specialty store all major Canadian cities have uh, you know a, a shop a big one or a small one and you've got amateur astronomers there uh, salespeople who are gonna help you they love the they have a passion for the hobby themselves so who better to really help you choose a very good solid a good performing scope. A lot of choices, a lot of prices. Are there any pitfalls, anything that I should watch out for? Yeah, definitely. You want to avoid anything with plastic. Plastic shouldn't be the main part of the telescope. A good metallic telescope like this one that we have over here is, uh, is a really good. It shows you it's aluminum and it's got great metal. Uh, it's solid performer. That's what you want to look for in terms of, and of course, the mount of the telescope is very important. Uh, What's important about, about a mount? This is obviously not a tripod, but many of the home telescopes are. Right. This is uh, a mount. Uh, uh, a Dobsonian mount. So it's really something that is very solid, very easy to use. It's very friendly with kids because it moves around very easily. Uh, there's no gizmos and gadgets to break. So it's a family friendly <laughs> scope. I would recommend half the size of this. This is a big monster mm -hmm. uh, for folks that are more advanced, but something half the size of this would be perfect for a family. Now, there are a lot of numbers associated with buying a telescope. What numbers do I really have to look out for? Well, first of all, avoid anything, uh, a box uh, where it ha has a telescope in it that has 500 or 1,000 times magnification because that's uh, any telescope can give you high magnifications. The larger the telescope, the clearer the views at high magnification. But any telescope would do any magnification. And, and frankly, most amateur astronomers only use very low mags, like 100 or 150 magnification, even to look at the cloud belts on Jupiter. So that's something to avoid. But what you want is the bigger the telescope, the, the more uh, Im better images that you get. Fantastic. Lots of great gift-giving ideas. And the mirror, of course, in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, the larger the mirror, the better. This is a 12-inch, so go big. 
that's what I recommend if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Andrew, a pleasure as always. Wonderful to have you here. Go to the website, thenightskyguy.com, and look out for that constellation Cassiopeia. And happy shopping for your scope.